everybody, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio and to the first in my series of how to's. So I have a list of about 30 things so far that I'm gonna try to do just super quick little how to's. So the thing with the how to's is that you may watch this three or four years from when I first post it. So some of the stuff like the actual how to will still be relevant. There may be things that um, you watch and the, the catalog obviously may be different, but the technique and how to use it will still be the same. Um, so the first thing we're going to start out with is how to use a Wink Stella. So if you're watching this and it's still um, 2021 or 2022, then I can show you where you find it in the catalog. So you can go to my website and I'll put the link down below the video. My website link will stay the same and you can just type in the little search thing, Stella, and that will pull, pull it here. But in this current catalog, it's on page 128. And it, sometimes it's hard to see on these pages what you're looking for, especially if you, if you haven't ever ordered one and you don't know what it looks like. Then it's this thing here, number seven. So you can see it is a glitter brush for accenting stamped images and a brush tip that creates both thick and thin lines. So that is their definition of it. You can do so much more than it with that. It's one of my very favorite coloring tools, but I have used them forever. For as long as we've had them, it's been one of my favorite tools and people in my in-person classes use them. And then I found out um, just recently that I'm not a very good teacher, I guess, to my in-person people because they weren't quite sure how to get going. Like they can use them because we use them and they use mine, but I'm going to show you from start to finish how to use your Stella. So it comes like this. Here's a brand new one. It's a Wink of Stella brush. So let's open the package because this part is the part that had them a little stumped. So when you get it, it looks like this. And so that was how I knew that they didn't know what they were doing because when they brought them, they still looked like this. When you use it, it should look like this. Now, if you have old ones, they'll look like this um, because in the last, I don't know, maybe year and a half or so, the tips have gone translucent. But these are the same thing. It's just that the uh, manufacturers have switched from the white plastic to the clear. So used ones should look like this brand new ones look like this. So if your still looks like this, this is not the way you should be using it. So this black thing right here is to keep it, the liquid from soaking into the brush um, during transit or before you're ready to. So there are instructions in here, but you know, I think women are just as bad as men. And even though there's instructions in here, we don't read them, <laughs> but you can throw those away because um, I'm going to show you how to do it. So take your Stella, unscrew this part right here, and see this little black thing? That is trash. So you don't need this. Throw that out, and then you'll know that this Stella has been activated. So you can see right here, if you look inside, and now that it's translucent, you can see it a whole lot better. It's got that little tip, and then it's got a little hole right here. And when you screw this together, then it's gonna be where the barrel, and you can kind of see the fluid. You know, Stella fluid is clear, but you can see it in here. Now, when you pull this off, if you do any kind of color, you're free, you use paint pens, it's same concept. So you have this clear fluid in here, you have the barrel here where it's gonna come down, and then right now this brush is clear. So right here on the side, it says push. I'm gonna open up a piece of paper here. So take this. Now you want, you want to push it, but you don't wanna get any more into the barrel and any more onto your tip than what you need to use because otherwise you're just gonna waste it. So I'm going to get, a stamp pad ready. So I always like to have something ready that I can color. Even if I'm not stamping an image, like a card, go ahead and stamp a big flower or something that you can color just on the off chance you get too much to come out. Cause it's a little tricky, especially, especially on your first go. So gently push where it says push and then we'll watch this fluid come down. I'm going to move it over to this part. So maybe we can see it a little bit better. Cause for me to get the angle is tricky. I've done it before in a video when I'm showing you how to do it. And for me to hold it for you, see, now see it coming right here and it has like these ribs so it flows slowly down so once you see that start to come kind of back off see it's on both sides now and it's starting to come out and if I was doing this on my own I would not stop I would just really really gently push and you can see every time I push it kind of pushes it down a little bit more and eventually you're gonna see it come to here I'm trying to do it in super slow motion which is even more difficult than doing it the regular way and you really do want to push on the side where it says push. It gives a little bit better. So let's keep going. I'm 
You see it? It's in the barrel. So now I'm really going to back off. See how it's right here? And it's going to go down into this tip, which there's a hole right here so you can see it. And it's going to drip down into my brush. So the brush is going to go from this white. And you don't do it this slow. Do it slow, especially your first time, but you don't have to do it quite this slow. I'm just trying to do it so you can see it. I'm going to get this ready now in case it comes out because sometimes a little drop comes out so that way we can go ahead and use it if it comes out especially since I'm trying to do it so you can see it here it comes okay now see there's our first little drop so I got this ready and then I have a card I have taken the wise men and I'll show you the stamp set in a second but see now we have some gold fluid now my brush tip is all ready to go and now it's got a nice line of it down here I'm just going to mix it with ink and I'll talk about this in just a second a little bit more. Super, super pretty. So see, I had that ready to go, ready to stamp. Even if I'm not using this, I could have stamped a bunch of um, daisies or something and had this ready to color in. So the other thing that you can do, I have this set aside. So I have this and I have stamped this with stars from the um, To The Moon stamp set. So I'm gonna just go back in here while I've got this that came out. Now when you stamp it over stamped images, it does grab a little bit of the color, but I stamped this in the same color that I knew was gonna go in here. And this is what it was talking about in the catalog, like brushing it over stamped images. So this is gonna really give it the fun space effect or star effect and glittery. So this way I'm just gonna be able to use up some of this and there's one more way I'm gonna use this up. Now you don't need to squeeze any more unless you put this up and you know you let it sit for a month or so before you get the chance to stamp again. Then you'll need to re-squeeze it and activate it. If you stamp fairly often, like I stamp almost every day and I use my Stella a lot, so it's very often, not very often that I need to reactivate it once once going. But if you do, you don't have to squeeze nearly as much because you can see where it's staying in there. So now we've got this. So now I'm gonna take just a, this is just a white note card. This is another thing you can do to use up that first time when you squeeze it. I'm gonna set these aside because I'm gonna turn these into something for you at the end. So I'm just gonna take this on the side here, scoop this up, just like that. Let me get my gun folder. It works a little bit better if you have something to hit it with. And I'm just gonna splatter this. And that's not taking anything up out of my barrel. It's just getting all this stuff off my brush tip. Okay, now let's, uh, some other ways. So you can splatter. I hope you can see how pretty it is. This is just, it's such a pretty, just soft glitter effect without having any glitter that's gonna fall off your cards. Dry super fast. Um, so here we just, super easy watercolor that didn't take anything because it was just extra this we brushed over the top of the stamp and look at what it does that's so pretty and i'm going to turn these into some quick cards so here let's color this little guy in so when you want to change from color um, i'll use this for scrap you just get rid of that now the other thing you can use stamp pads and i do that a lot um, for this one i'm going to kind of mix just um, so you can see different techniques. So I'm going to use, this is Cajun Craze, and mixed with Estella, it gives a little bit of a copper. So I'm kind of pressing it, not hard, hard, but press down with my watercolor pencil, and these are in the catalogs, just like that. And then you're just going to use the fluid that's in here, and just pull that along. And it acts as the water part of your watercolor pencil to do the shading. It's super pretty and it gives you a really nice shaded effect. And see that Cajun craze takes on with that little bit of glitter. It has a metallic effect now. Kind of transforms it to copper. So here's our one of our little wise men gifts. I think I'll skip the gold because I'm going to stick this on that card I splattered. Then let's go, I just pulled some colors. Let's do this one in some cherry cobbler. So when you do this, this is a good one because I haven't done this one with this one. So just take it and press your hands down. 
And when you smash it, then it gives you a little bit of an ink palette right here. And then as you color, the Wink of Style has a great fine tip. See how tiny this design is? So I'm gonna pull it, and then as it uses up ink, it gets lighter. So now that side's darker than this side. And this is darker than that side. And then I'm not gonna put any more ink because these are tiny images, but see, as I keep painting, it lightens up. And now I can go down here. I'm still using Cherry Cobbler, but it gets lighter and lighter. So one color and we have all those variations of color. So now let's do some Blackberry Bliss. This one I think I just used recently, yep. So once your ink's on here, you don't have to do it until all of your ink's used up. You could see when I did the crushed curry that it had been used up fairly recently. So with this one, I'm gonna do dark, skip, because that way as it lightens up, I'll be able to go back in a second and fill them in and there'll be an obvious color shift. And let's get this one here. And now I'm gonna go over here where I had my watercolor pencil and kind of mix these. The watercolor pencils are one of our cheapest coloring mediums. Now I'm gonna go back to this. And because it's lightened up, it'll be a definite difference in color. I will put pictures of this on my um, blog and that way you can go look up close at the colors. Now when you get your color off, don't do this any more than you have to. Don't go, 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 because obviously you're using up fluid and you don't want to use up any more than you have to. So this is spruce and you don't want to, don't put any more ink on here than you have to. Same thing, because then you'll just have to rub it off forever. The less ink that you start with, the less you'll have to rub off at the end. I might add some of the crushed curry. I wasn't sure how many colors were on this because I've not made this card. I had in my head, but not in real life. I'm gonna add a tad bit more and add it right here. So I wanted to show you it on this card because this is a super tiny little card. Doesn't take hardly any supplies, but just because we've added this beautiful Wink of Stella, it's so shimmery, it's so festive. Yeah, that brightens it right up. And then you can take this, and I don't care if it has a little bit on it. I'm just gonna paint over. You don't wanna go right over the top of your words with it super th thick, cause it will, mm, not dim, but if you put a whole bunch of glitter right over black, then you know that your black's not gonna look as sharp as it did to start out with. But then it does make your paper take on that really pretty silver quality. So we've got those. So let's make this one into a really quick card first. So here's the envelope and it just has a little match to it. And here is the stamp set that I used. And if you're not watching and this is no longer available, there'll be something that is very similar because you can do the same technique with flowers. It's just a tiny little note card. Here's where I've splattered the ink on, but this is called Great Tidings. So I'm just gonna take this. It has the splatter, it has the matching envelope. You could add, I'm not gonna add any embellishments. I'm just gonna let the Stella be its own star of the show. And then I stamped it with Memento. Now you can use stays on, but with stays on, you don't want to use stays on with a um, with photopolymer stamps. So I just almost always exclusively use Memento. I don't use stays on very often. I'm going to put this down here in the corner. I was intention. I originally was going to put it in the middle, but I like how that splattered up there. You could take your um, Stella again and whack off more if you have a little bit more. So first card, super easy. Now these, if you have a friend or a daughter or a sister or um, granddaughter, somebody that you want to teach how to stamp, super easy. This couldn't be any easier. It's black pad um, and I would do watercolor pencils because look how pretty that looked. So one set of watercolor pencils is gonna get you a ton of colors and a Stella. Um, and then just pick an outline stamp 
or if you just wanna get a couple of colors. So for this one, I used To The Moon. So here's the stamp. And then I just stamped it in the crushed curry and brushed just Stella over the top of it. So pick a few of your favorite colors. And then I do have a black pad and I have um, one of the words out of it. And this one says, so this is a photopolymer. And this one says, always reach for the stars. Just stamp that right over the top. Same little small note card. This one I'm not even going to put on dimensionals. I'm just going to see it right here. So as I film this, the original time, it is the early November. So these, when you do small cards like this, a great gift. So you can make a bunch of little cards like this. This is a great set to do it with because it covers a whole bunch of occasions. So you can make these and then give them for gifts at Christmas. So your non-card making friends, oh, are they non-card makers? <laughs> can have a bunch of get of cards that they can use throughout the year. So there it is on top. Now, one last thing. I have a flower pot, if you can see over to the side of my office. I'll put this here so they don't go up. And I have probably 30 of these. Now, I don't need as many these days because I had them pre-COVID when I would have lots of giant classes. Now, on this one, you can still see that this, you can hold them up to the light and today it's really sunny and beautiful out. So I can still see that there is Stella in here. Once they're gone, then you can still use them because these brushes and this one, you can see this Stella in here. Um, got some on my nail. Um, has been used a lot with the darker ink. So it can stain your tip, but this is a great paintbrush. So you can use it just as we did before if you don't want, like if you're making, if you are coloring the fisherman or a golf set or you know something where you just wanna color and you don't want it to be glitter, then just save this and you can use it for that. You can use it, um, my daughter paints cornhole boards <laughs> for gifts. Um, fine tip, like beautiful, not just like sport team ones, beautiful um, custom designed cornhole and they're very dainty. So these are great paintbrushes. And if you go to the store these days and buy a good paintbrush, they're really expensive. Um, you can take our green glue and use this and like dot on and add your sequins. Um, and for those, then often I throw them away, but you had a brush anyways that was empty. So what were you going to do with it? So I keep them until often them with the green glue. Once they've been used a few times, I rinse them out and then Here's another tip when I use them with the green glue, I take some washi tape or a Sharpie and I mark it. So I know that the ones that are marked with Sharpie or washi tape, those can no longer be used for painting. So they kind of have a lifespan and once they get to the end and they're no longer, longer useful, uh, there's a stamp and a border, um, they have served their purpose well and I get every last little bit of use out of them. So there's my first how-to. Come back in a few days and I'm going to do a how-to basic starting with a stamp apparatus. And then after that, I'm going to do a basic how to with our stamping blocks, like how to take care of them, how to clean them, how to know what sizes you need. Um, and if you have anything that you want to see in the how to series, then just let me know and I'll add it to my list. Everybody have a great day. Bye.